Hello and welcome to Marketing91.com. Balance of payment or BOP is the record of all economic transactions between the people of a country and the rest of the world in a given period, usually a year. It includes all economic transactions regardless of whether those are financial claims or gifts. It includes those transactions that do not involve actual payment of money as well. A country's BOP distinguishes between the items on the current and capital accounts. Current account includes Merchandise or trade account, which includes only transactions related to all commodities exported and imported. And Invisible account, which records all services rendered and revised by a country's residents. It includes the following Transportation for moving goods and services and passengers between nations. Money spent by tourists and other travellers in foreign countries. Miscellaneous services such as advertising, pensions, royalties, magazine subscriptions, license fees and so on. Investment income including interest, rent, dividend and profit and commercial loan repayment. Current account is very important from the viewpoint of calculating national income because it includes the goods and services produced and exported from a country as well as those imported from abroad in a given year. Capital account is used for paying debts and claims. Both short and long term capital movements are recorded separately in this account. It includes items employed to finance exports and imports of goods and services such as private balances on government amounts, assistance provided by international agencies and so on. These items do not affect a country's national income in the short term, but they change the stock of capital and may affect national income in future. Disequilibrium in a country's BOP appears either as a surplus or a deficit. B equals R minus P, where B is balance of payments, R is receipt and P refers to payments. If B is positive, BOP is surplus because the country is receiving more from the world than what it has to pay. If B is negative, BOP is in deficit because the country is paying more to the world than it is receiving. And if B is in zero, BOP is in equilibrium, that is, the country's payments and receipts are equal. Causes of disequilibrium are High economic growth leads to high levels of import. Improvement in living standards raises import capacity. Rapid rise in population results in higher consumption and lower exports. Heavy borrowing from developed countries leads to deficit. And inflation causes exports to fall. Moving on, the types of BOP disequilibrium are The first is cyclical disequilibrium, may be caused by economic trade cycles. During good times, prices rise and BOP is in surplus. During depression, prices drop and BOP is in deficit. Cyclical disequilibrium in BOP may occur because of the following reasons. Trade cycles follow different patterns in different countries. Income elasticity of import demand is different in different countries. The stabilization programs and measures employed by different countries are different. And price elasticity of import demand differs in different countries. Next is structural disequilibrium. It may be caused by structural changes in various sectors of the economy, either domestically or abroad. Changes in tastes, habits and incomes of people and so on lead to changes in import demand. For instance, if Indian cotton textile goods became unpopular owing to changes in tastes abroad, the resources used for producing cotton textiles will have to be shifted. Such diversion of resources to another industry that produces exportable goods requires some time during which period exports will remain down while imports will be flat. This will result in structural disequilibrium in India's BOP position. Short-run equilibrium may be caused either by borrowing or lending for a short period or by temporary decline in a country's exports. Such disequilibrium is temporary because later the country in question can correct it easily. When such disequilibrium occurs over a long period, it becomes chronic and may severely affect a country's economic standing and international relations. The last type is fundamental disequilibrium. It is a persistent long-term surplus or deficit in a country's BOP. It may be distinguished from the other types of disequilibrium in terms of its nature, causes and magnitude. Whenever a country is faced with fundamental BOP disequilibrium, 
the government authorities of that country take certain drastic and deliberate measures to control it. Adverse BOP can be checked by implementing the following measures. Monetary measures. These effects of these measures in terms of improving BOP are two-pronged. They boost exports and curtail imports. However, these measures act indirectly. Non-monetary measures. These measures act directly but only in one direction. For instance, tariffs and quotas control imports only, while export promotion measures improve exports only. Under monetary measures, deflation is a policy that aims to reduce income and expenditure and thus the import capacity of people. If the total money supply in an economy is reduced, other variables such as investment, income expenditure and price level too will decrease, thus curtailing import demand automatically. Simultaneously, the demand for domestic goods in international markets will increase owing to a fall in their prices. Thus, export will be promoted and import will be controlled. Exchange depreciation refers to a decline in the exchange rate of one currency relative to another currency. Suppose the rate of exchange between the Indian rupee and the US dollar is dollar one is to 10 rupees. If India experiences adverse BOP relative to the US, the external value of the rupee will depreciate. Suppose the rate of exchange becomes $1 is to 12 rupees. This 20% exchange depreciation of Indian currency means that Indian goods become cheaper in the US market. Hence, exports from India will be boosted while imports from the US will be curtailed. Devaluation refers to lowering the external value of a home currency relative to other currencies by the government. It has the same effect as exchange depreciation, but devaluation is an official reduction in the value of home currency and it is authorized by IMF, while exchange depreciation is an organic reduction due to market forces of foreign currency. The immediate effect of devaluation is a rise in the cost of imported commodities and fall in the price of exports which decreases exports and limits imports. Devaluation is implemented as a measure to the purchasing power of domestic currency relative to foreign currency. Exchange control is an organized system for regulating all foreign currency transactions through government intervention. It does not permit exporters to sell the foreign exchange earned by them in the manner they prefer. Similarly, it does not allow importers to buy unlimited amounts of foreign currency. Under non-monetary measures, import duties and quotas are the taxes imposed on commodities whose imports are to be restricted. Because duties raise the price of such commodities, the demand for them drops. Export promotion programs include subsidies, export incentives, marketing facilities and priority loans to export-oriented units as per the central bank's credit policy and so on. The last measure is import substitution. Industries producing import substitutes may be induced and encouraged by a deficit country to control import needs in order to reduce the quantum of imports. Thank you.